in. going on guys as you can tell with my wolf head we're in the middle of lockdown um, so at this point we've got no idea whether we're even going to have a snapper season but i guess the best thing we can do in the meantime to get g'd up is at least be prepared and, and get our shit ready so um i'm gonna take you guys through what i do to prepare for snapper season and um hopefully before we know it, we'll all be holding hands and rubbing gunnels at ricketts point obviously um october's fast approaching so the snapper are gonna start moving into the bay i'll actually show you guys using the map. So it's a bit interactive. What ends up happening is obviously the snapper come in through the heads. Obviously what they're doing is they're chasing that 16 plus degree temperature to spawn in. And obviously logically, the warmer areas are gonna be all the shallows around the outside. So what you'll find is they'll first start firing up sort of coming into this channel into Corio Bay because that warms up pretty quickly. And then they'll start making their way down towards the north which is where we do majority of our fishing what i tend to find is it's sort of like this i call it the triangle it's sort of like between p2 to altona through to st kilda and back so at the start of that season sort of that start to mid-october a heap of snapper and haynes hunters congregating in front of williamstown footy oval personally my favorite um, early season spot is right up near St Kilda Breakwall but you have the fish all the way through here especially with that warmer water up near the Yarra River sort of where the old Princess Pier is next to all those pylons that will fire up and then what you'll find is as we near November the fish will start coming down you'll find them all through here from Brighton down to Ricketts Point and then as we sort of get sort of November mid-November they're going to start moving their way down you'll find them out in front of Carrum mid-november onwards you'll find a heap of fish out in front of frankston mount eliza so come december all the shallow areas are going to be too hot and that 16 degree temperature is going to push more into the middle of the bay so all this deep water will be optimum temperature the fish start filtering towards out in front of mornington mount martha out in the deeper water i did well sort of mid-december um, out near the mussel farms and then after december that's when the that's when the fish all start filtering out of the bay now in terms of where to anchor up and whatnot now i don't use my sounder as much as i used to i don't tend to sound around and try to find ticks anymore i'll just go to a landmark whether it be a reef or a shipwreck because what the fish tend to do is they'll they'll swim up and down but then they'll school up and hold on a structure on a reef they'll spawn they'll do their thing they'll feed so in all honesty as long as you go to a, a typical landmark which you find all up and down that east side um you'll be fine just hold on there barely up and, and you'll find your fish so yeah let's get stuck into it and i'll show you what gear i use all right in terms of the rig that i use i like to keep it simple i just use the standard old snelled snapper rig got that on 30 pound liter and with a little pea sinker to help get the baits down now the thing is when you find the snapper and they're coming through they smash absolutely everything. So it doesn't matter if you've got a paternoster down there, running rig, whatever it is. So I run the snout rig on all my rods. The reason being is, one, it's just, I've always done it. It's it's pretty much, you know, standard protocol. But the other reason is because if you've got a paternoster down there, if you've got little baits, you're more than likely to get the small ones amongst them. Whereas if you've got whole pillies or whiting down there, um, you're more than likely to, to catch the bigger ones. Now, when it comes to the leader strength i use 30 pound leader all the way through the season i know a lot of people who use much heavier line we're talking 60 70 80 pound leader i think it's a waste i've always used 30 pound and i've never been bitten off i think the less poundage you go the better because the lighter your gear the more natural it's going to sit in the water the more natural your baits are going to sit and when a fish has a little nibble you're not going to scare it off you know you're not going to have thick 80 pound line sitting next to the bait that's going to spook the fish i feel like the more natural you leave it the lighter your gear the more likely you are to to entice a bite so i use 30 pound start of the season all the way to the end people say they have sharper teeth at the start of the season and you're more likely to get bitten off i don't know i've never been bitten off now the one thing i always do as well after you swivel so on your main line you want to always put a bead why just to protect your rod tip i've lost count of the amount of times i've had people on the boat you know who don't fish often and the amount of times i cringe when the swivel gets eaten up into the tip of the rod kills me so i always put a bead on now you guys have probably already seen heaps of times how these rigs are made but may as well quickly show you guys anyway just pop that to the side now what you want to do is you want to cut about i'd say 
three quarters of a metre of, of litre. Here's one I prepared earlier. All you do is feed the line through the butt of the hook. And here's still a uni knot or whatever. I don't even know what my knot is to be honest. I'll just do the one where you do the loop like that. And then I'll just feed it through like four or five times. Tighten that, give it a pull. I like using the scissor trick, pull that, cut the excess off. So it doesn't take long at all, it's pretty quick. Um, you want to adjust that to you know, standard size pili or a whiting. Now for me personally, it doesn't matter that much. I'm going to show you later why when I'm baiting up, but you want it about finger length apart. And all you do is grab that line and lie it on the back of the hook. And you grab your main line and you just wrap it around. And I do that about 10 or 12 times. Then you grab grab the end of your leader and put it through the butt. Pull it through, and that'll tighten up. And bang, there's your snell. And then you feed your little pea sinker through there. And you tie your your um, your swivel on. Now another big part about being prepared is having all your rigs ready to go and I like to use a rigging wallet to put all my rigs in. Now like a lot of other people I actually used to use a pool noodle so I used to tie my rigs around the noodle but I actually don't recommend that anymore at all. Reason being is when you go fishing and you take your noodle and you pop it in your gunnel or whatever it is it's eventually going to get salt water on it and when you get salt water on it you'll notice that your swivels and your hooks especially where the knot is starts to rust and obviously it's not good for your um your leader as well there's been times where i've had like 10 rigs made up on the noodle and then after a couple of trips they're all pretty much rusted out and it's it, you end up throwing it in the bin so this is this is my rigging wallet here and the thing i love about this a it's compact everything's in there it's all i need when i go and the other thing is, when you close it up, it's watertight. Only thing I take with me when I go fishing. Um, I'll have everything ready to go in here. As you can see, I've already got some running rigs made up. They're my gummy rigs. As you guys know, that's my bogey fish. But um, yeah, I just fill up my um, snelled snapper rigs in these little pouches. I've got all my terminal tackle in here. And if I need sinkers, I'll just chuck them out the back. And that's pretty much all I need when I go on a, go on a trip. Grab our rig. And I just usually I hold it in my hand like that and I just wrap the line around. Open up our first pouch and then feed that straight in. And then what you do is you get your little bead and you put that in there so it's all ready to go. What I'll do is I'll fill all these up and before a session I'll have all four rods already made up with snelled rigs on them. So these are all additional in case I get busted off. And with these ones, I'll actually go half, half. So I'll go half with sinkers, half without sinkers. I'll always start off with rigs that have a sinker on it. But if I notice throughout the session that I keep getting snagged and busted off, what I'll do is I'll actually throw on a rig without the sinker. So it's harder for the bait to actually reach the bottom. You know, the, the last thing you want is a hot bite of snapper coming through and then you're getting busted off because you got snags and then you gotta, you got to make up rigs because you don't have any ready. Now, speaking of being prepared, I'm going to help you guys out as well. I've actually got a Mad Fish rigging wallet. I'm going to do a bit of a giveaway. So all you need to do to be in the draw is subscribe to the YouTube channel, jump on my Instagram page, subscribe, and send me a private message on Instagram with a screenshot showing that you have subscribed to my channel. And I'll pick someone out to send this rigging wallet to. In terms of the gear I use, now if you watch my videos, you know I love my Sedonas. I think they're awesome value for money. Now when you're fishing for snapper, you don't need hectic gear. I think 6,000s are a perfect size. You know, you can even get away with 2,000 size or whatever they are. Now on this, I've got 15 pound mainline. I use mono because I, I prefer mono. I do have a couple of rods with braid on it. 
um, but I do prefer mono. I think especially in snapper season, in the middle of a hot bite, um, you can have lines going everywhere. The last thing you want is a is a braid tangle. Like I said before, you don't need anything too hectic for snapper. You're not fishing for kingfish or tuna. But I've seen people use 80 pound mainline. You don't need that. Unless you're gonna be a hero and skull drag the fish in, which I don't know why you'd, you'd wanna do that. Now that's 15 pound platypus line. And the awesome thing with platypus is, sometimes I've copped snags, and when I try to pull the line out of a snag, I've had my 30 pound leader pop before the 15 pound platypus. So for, for Port Phillip Bay, that's enough. For, if you're fishing Western Port and you've got a lot of a by, bycatch like gummies and seven gills and eagle rays, you probably do need to go a bit heavier on the line. But overall speaking, you know, 15, 20 pound main line, um, 30 pound leader is more than enough. Now these are the rods that I use. This one's a Shimano Taipan, which is a seven foot, five to eight kilo rod. So that is plenty for Port Phillip Bay. So that's what I pair up my 6,000 with. And then I've also got a Daiwa Saltus. This one's PE two to four, which is what, you know, 40, 50 pound. So that's a bit of a heavier setup and I'll chuck my 8,000 reels on this. So I've got four rods all up, two Taipans, two Saltus, and that does the job for me. That'll cover everything. Now, obviously you've got your three main baits. You've got pillies, you've got silver whiting, and you've got squid. I mix and match it all the time, depends what I've got. 90% of the time, I'll just go pillies. If I've got silver whiting on hand, I'll use silver whiting. If I've caught squid recently, I'll use some squid rings. But like I said, when the fish are coming through, they smash absolutely everything. So you're gonna get it no matter what. As long as your, your bait's fresh, that's all you need. This pillie's a bit worse for wear, that's from last season. But I'm gonna turn him into burly and I'll show you what I do with my leftover bait in a minute. Now, just to show you guys how I actually bait these up. Now, most people normally, they have one hook coming out of here and they have the other hook sort of coming up the top of the fish. Now, the one thing that I've noticed fishing for snapper is whenever I get a hit and I miss a fish and I bring the bait in, the head's always gone. What snapper do is they always smash the head no matter what. They never ever smash the top part of the fish. So what I like to do is, I bring this, I bring the first hook in through the side and you have it coming out close to the gill. But what I do with this one is I actually do the same thing. Again, in the fish's belly, and then out through the side. And obviously you do a half hitch as well. So you do a little loop and bang, that's your half hitch. So your bait's gonna be sitting like that. All right, and how I prepare my burly is, after every trip, I'll collect all my leftover bait in a bag. So we'll grab that. I'm basically gonna chop these up and that's gonna be our burly. Put them into snap lock bags. So what, the way I do it is, I won't fill it up all the way. And reason being is I flatten them out. And when you flatten them out, it does two things. It's easy to store in the freezer, so you can just stack them all up. And the other thing is as well, when it freezes, it doesn't all clump together. So when you're out there, by the time you get to your first spot, it's already defrosted. All you need to do is open it and start, start um, cubing. There you go. There are little, there are little bags of burley. So I'll chuck, I'll chuck these into a little corner of the freezer. They fit in there, nice and snug. And then basically every time I decide to go out, I might take maybe two or three bags, and that's enough to last the whole session anyway. Each baggie has like, I don't know, probably three or four handfuls of, of burley in it. And each time you anchor, you only throw out a couple of handfuls at a time. So two to three bags is enough for a session. And then what will end up happening is. Whatever bait I have left over from that particular session, I'll do the same thing. It actually keeps replenishing itself. Now, the other thing I'll do is I'll always buy my bait in bulk. So I'll go when it comes in fresh, buy a, you know, probably about 10 or so bags, fill them all up in here. So pretty much my bait's ready to go for each session. Because during snapper season, I have to go at least two times a week. So it saves me from going to, to get bait every single time. So yeah, that's pretty much it. That's me prepping for snapper season. Hopefully this bad boy will be on the water very soon. See you out there. Alright, who's got bags?